Morning, everyone. We've reached the last weekend of October here to talk politics on Political Brew. As always, former Speaker of the House John Richardson and filling in for Phil this week is former House Republican leader Joe Bruno. Good to see you, Joe. Thanks. Thanks for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me. Uh, another busy week, so let's get right to it. Uh, the president uh, referred to the impeachment inquiry this past week as a lynching. Uh, he likes, likes to use incendiary uh, language at times. Senator Susan Collins tweeted that lynching brings back images of a terrible time in our history. The president never should have made that comparison. Now, there's been a lot of outrage about it, but some Democrats, including Joe Biden, uh, use the same language when talking about the Bill Clinton impeachment. So, Joe, what do you make of this, uh, and, and what's the impact, I if mean, any? If you look up the term lynching in the dictionary, it's... It's an unfair trial of accusing someone of doing something illegal or, you know. So it's, it's an unfair trial. But in the history of this country, we think back to segregation and black people. And, and so when you say lynching, that's the immediate response to it. I'm not sure the president meant anything other than that he's being unfairly accused. And John, the Democrats aren't, as I say, not clean on this either. No, no one has clean hands using this word. I think it's a dark word because of what Joe said, the history of uh, lynchings in this country and how they were associated with race. But I don't think uh, that um, this is a word that we ought to be using. I mean, right now we need to be ratcheting down the rhetoric coming out of Washington, D.C., have a very, uh, I th what I consider to be a, uh, a, a, a very strong response uh, to what they're doing down there, a very serious moment, but but I don't think the words like lynching are going to help out much. But important for Senator Collins to speak up about it? I give her credit for speaking up on this and saying that's just not the word to use because it sends all the wrong messages, I think, to the country. Uh, so, yeah, she gets a good nod to this week for having used uh, or having said this is not the word to use. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Susan Collins did the right thing. You know, she, she just said, Let, let's tone this down. Let's not use words like that that bring up bad images. And I mean, if she could be apologizing almost every day if she had to. Yes, of course, that's true. <laughs> um, in the uh, 2020 race for Senate for Susan Collins' seat, retired Air Force General John Tracy this week dropped out. Uh, he'd only been in about a month now, or so, but he said the vast now, sums of money necessary to fund a competitive campaign are realistically a bridge too far. Uh, John, he also talked about the fact that uh, the Democratic Senate Campaign Committee and other groups got in early to endorse Sarah Gideon, funnel lots of money her way. He says that that's not just bad for his campaign, but it's unhealthy for the nation. Is he right about that? I think he is. I, I think that clearly uh, any, whether it's the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee or the Republicans, uh, they really ought to stay out of the state politics until a, a person is decided and, and, and deemed to be the nominee. I think this is very bad because it's one of the things I think that was held against Hillary Clinton when she ran is that she was the heir apparent and uh, they moved people aside to, uh, you know, make sure that she would be the nominee. Nominee. I think it left a bitter taste, and I'm concerned for the Democrats that this leaves a bitter taste if, in fact, for instance, Betsy Sweet, and in this case, the general is already out, but when Betsy Sweet, uh, if she is not nominated, how will she feel when she was not given the nod or even given a fair level playing field? Joe? I, I totally agree with John. I mean, this, this is a flashback to 2016 and, and Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. It goes down that same path. You are our chosen one, and therefore you're getting all the money, and everybody else just get out of the way. And I think That's that, not democracy. No, and I think Sarah Gideon will be a good candidate if she's nominated, but I don't know that she should get it this way with a nod ahead of time. Speaking well, of money, uh, I'll go ahead. John and I disagree on whether Sarah Gideon will be a good candidate <laughs> well, or not. Understood. <laughs> uh, speaking of money, county jails in Maine always need more money. A legislative panel met with sheriffs this week to start looking for ways to assure adequate funding to be able to recruit and keep guards. Uh, they've talked about trying to uh, reduce demand by uh, shorter prison sentences or uh, the lengths of sentences, the number of people stuck behind bars awaiting trial. Uh, Joe, this is this is you've been you've been around Augusta long enough to know. This, this comes up every year. Give me one state agency that doesn't say they need more money. And so here we go all over again. You know, just give us more money and we'll be, we'll be fine. But every year you give them more money and it's never enough. So this is, this is nothing new. This is state agencies saying, give me more money, we'll make things better. It's kind of like saying, we'll give more monies to the town and you know, your property taxes will go down. Well, 
Show me one town that's actually held their property taxes down. But, you know, as, as uh, Kevin Joyce, the sheriff in Cumberland County, said, when people show up at our door, when they're dropped off, we can't say no. we got to be right. able to take care they, of them. They certainly have no control over it. I actually think it was a mistake some years ago for the legislature to uh, stick their nose into the county's business. I think that they, when they started uh, taking the money away from the counties and imposing these caps, these spending caps, uh, they really took the democratic process away from counties and from the cities and towns who funded the counties and I think that right now we have a problem and that is the state is picking the winners and losers in the county government about who's going to fund jails and at how much and I think that's a bad system anytime the state's involved trying to parse out these monies to the counties that's a real problem and I can tell you that you have a real crisis within the corrections uh, units in this state of Maine where people are working double, triple overtimes, working over 100 hours a week that is going to lead to real problems within the correction system. Well, what we're not looking at is w the, the minimum wage going up has driven up every other wage around the state. So therefore, we need to pay people to come in and take a dangerous job like a corrections officer, and you're not going to pay them minimum wage. No. And these jobs are becoming more uh, uh, serious as, as we go forward. You need to have mental health experience, first aid experience. Uh, all these things go into the issues of whether or not uh, you're going to be a good corrections officer. All right, lots more to talk about this morning on Political Brew. We'll do that in the next hour. New Center, Maine, back after this.